Good evening, good evening, good evening to each and every one of you that are tuning in with us this evening. We thank God for yet another day. We thank God for another opportunity to be able to come into your homes, to be, uh, to be able to gather together on the airways uh, to study the word of God. And we get um, kind of a privilege and a blessing that we are able to come together in such a manner as this. I don't have any um, any announcements on this evening, so what we will do, we'll just go straight to the Word. We will uh, pray, and then we will get straight to the Word of God. Amen. Father, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity for us to be able to gather together, Lord God, to call on your holy and divine name. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, as we study your holy and divine word, that you will be one in our midst, Lord God. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for uh, all that, that you will say and what you will uh, say through me this evening, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, that something will be said on this line this evening, Lord God, that someone will be able, Lord God, to... Uh, it will help them, Lord God, on this life journey, Lord, and I pray that they will be able to take this word, Lord God, and run with this word, Father. We just thank you for that. Father, we pray for our pastor. We lift him up right now. We call him blessed man of God, not only our pastor, but pastors all over this land and country. We pray that you will bless them and those that are gathering together for a Bible study on tonight or whatever night, Lord God, we pray that you will bless them, Lord God, to be able to bring forth the word of God and that it will touch lives, Lord God, not only touch their lives, but change lives, Lord God. We thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. Now, Lord God, we ask that you will bless uh, those that are sick, Lord God, in the hospitals, Lord God, those that may be at home, Lord God. We lift them up to you right now, Lord God, and uh, we claim healing in their bodies right now, Lord God, because we know that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon you. And by your stripes, Lord God, you said that we are healed. And Father, we thank you and we stand on that word. We won't believe anything else. We believe what your word says, Lord God. No matter what it looks like, Lord God, even no matter what it feels like. We choose to believe what the word says, Lord God. Father, we ask now that you would forgive us of our sins and our transgressions because we know that we have sinned, Lord God, just since this morning alone, even this afternoon, just a few minutes ago, Lord God. We may have had some thoughts, Lord God, that was displeasing in your, that was not pleasing in your sight. We may have had, uh, said something, uh, I've done something, Lord God, that we know, Lord God, was not in keeping with your will. Now we ask that you will forgive us, Lord God, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Father, we love you. We bless you and we praise you. It's all in the mighty, the precious, and the holy name of Jesus Christ. We do pray this prayer and give thanks. Amen, amen, and amen. <clears throat> well, this evening we are going to kind of continue on somewhat in um, what we were talking about uh, last week. Uh, in our last uh, lesson, you know, we were talking about, uh, uh, we were uh, talking about keeping our focus. And so uh, we, we're just going to, we may, uh, I mean, we're still going to be in that vicinity. Excuse me, my throat is dry. Uh, we're still going to be talking about keeping our focus. And then we know that it in, in, in this fast-paced, attention-grabbing world, it is easy for us to just get caught up in the everyday hustle and bustle of life. And we will lose sight of, uh, of our true purpose in life, which is to worship and love God. Because Matthew 22 and 37 uh, uh, tells us that uh, we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. And so, you know, last week uh, we were told that we, are, we were to run 
uh, with perseverance this race because we are in a race. We found out on last week uh, in our study that uh, this Christian uh, 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 life is a race. And uh, it says that it to um, and we were in the book of Hebrews and it, uh, and we found out that uh, we were to run with perseverance this race that has already been marked out for us. And while we're running this race, we are, we were supposed to do what? Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, uh, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So then how can we resist? There is just so much going on in this world. This world has so much to offer, all type of attractions, all type of charm, all type of glamour and all type of temptations and seductions, all of this going on. How is it, uh, how are we supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus with all that is going on around us? Remember last week, we talked about that we need to know uh, uh, what is around us or uh, either who is around us. Remember I said last week, sometimes we can have the wrong people around us. And sometimes, uh, you know, we have to know this. Uh, so in order for us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, uh, we really, first of all, we need to know what the word focus means. Focus is to direct one's attention or to concentrate on something. In other words, when you're focused, it means that you are looking directly at something and it seems like all of your attention is on that particular thing. And if we are focused on Jesus, then he has our attention. In other words, we are concentrating on him and his word. In other words, uh, he should be uh, occupying the forefront of our minds. And so, uh, uh, having said that, uh, because such a focus as us keeping our focus on Jesus Christ, uh, uh, we, because we learned last week that Jesus is the head of the body, uh, the church, which is us. We are the body. He is the head. We're not talking, you know, we talked about that last week. We're not talking about the church building. We are the body of Christ. So we are, we are the church. And, uh, and in Colossians 1 and 18, it tells us that he is the beginning. Not only is he is the, uh, you know, he told uh, us in Colossians 1 and 8 that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Then it goes on to tell us that he is the beginning and he's the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything, not something, but in everything, he might have the preeminence. So by right, that lets us know that Christ should be our focus. No if, ands, and buts about it. He should have our focus. So however then, I don't want you to be sidetracked, but I want you to know that we have an enemy. Not only do we have an enemy, but he's also a thief. And then John 10 and 10 tells us that uh, the thief cometh but to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is his desire. That is what he wants to do. So tonight, what do, uh, we are going to look at what it really means to steal, kill, and destroy. And we're going to look at what it is that the thief is trying to steal, what it is that he's trying to kill, and what it is that he is trying to destroy. So tonight, uh, I'm going to kind of take it out of the order in which it's in. Uh, uh, but we are going to look first at uh, at a uh, kill. I know it, the scripture says to steal, kill, and destroy. But from what we're looking at tonight, we're going to look at kill first. And when you look at the word kill... According to the dictionary, kill means to deprive life in any manner. Uh, no, no matter whether it is a human life 
or animal life, but it means to destroy or to do away with. It means to neutralize, to muffle, or to deaden. And so that is what the thief wants to do. Our first thing that he wants to do is to what? He wants to kill our purpose. I just told you what our purpose is, to worship and the love of God. And so our purpose is not, you know, so many of us, uh, you know, we've got our priorities in the wrong place. You see, our purpose is not to be famous. Our purpose is not to be a millionaire. Our purpose is not to be a superstar. However, you know, I'm not saying any of these are bad things because if it's by the grace of God that we attain these things, then that's a, that's great. But that is not the purpose for which we were created. That's, that is where I'm going with this. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having money. Uh, uh, if you're a millionaire, that's fine. It, it's nothing wrong with being that. But that is not our purpose for which we were created. See, our purpose is the very reason that we were put on this earth. And so it is a plan that God has designed uh, for us that will bring glory to him, not glory to ourselves. Sometimes we are so busy trying to get our, bring glory to ourselves uh, that we forget that we were created to do what? To bring God glory. Uh, so uh, uh, as I said, this is the very reason that we were put on this earth. And it is the plan that God has designed for us that we will bring glory to him. But the adversary, the devil, is out to kill our purpose. And he's going to try everything in his power to get us to neglect uh, and turn away from our purpose. See, he wants to deprive each of us of love uh, that we have for God. And the very re and, and, and not only our love for God, the ultimate thing that he wants us to do is to deprive us of, of our very life. See, he wants to destroy us. And he wants to do away with the very reason that you and I were created. He wants to muffle us. And he wants to neutralize our glory that we are to give to God the Father. Because we know that God deserves the glory. And God deserves all of our praise. But see, the devil wants to steal the glory and the praise, what? For himself. And so that is the reason why he tries to uh, he, uh, 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 put distractions in our way. Uh, because he wants uh, uh, to us to neglect our purpose and allow th about allowing things and situations uh, to come in our lives. Uh, in other words, he calls things and situations to become distractions. And uh, But after today, <laughs> I want you to be able to say boldly, I don't do distractions. And I know uh, I, somebody's asking, well, why are you saying that? Well, let me tell you. Distractions are only designed to cause us to lose focus on something. And that something in this case is our purpose. And as I told you before, our purpose is to worship and to love God. And so this is what uh, Satan wants us to do. Because, you know, if he tried to uh, distract uh, Jesus Christ uh, from his mission, what do you think about us? Remember when uh, uh, Jesus had uh, fasted uh, and he had gone on for 40 days and then he had uh, gone into the wilderness. Uh, the first one there to meet him was Satan. And so when he tried to uh, get Jesus uh, to turn, he knew that after those 40 days that he was hungry. So what did he do? He tried to get him to turn the stones into bread. 
Not only that, but he, uh, you know, told him, took him up on that high pinnacle and told him, if you jump off, you know, you got legions of angels that your father have already commanded and, and uh, they'll catch you. They won't even let you dash your foot against the stone. You know, he's trying to tell him all of this and then ultimately he's going to take him up uh, and tell him to look around and see all of this and say, all of this I will give to you. But what he failed to realize is that what he was looking at, even though he's the small G God of this world, but he didn't realize that he doesn't own anything. God is the creator and the owner of it all. But he told him that if he would just bow down and worship him, that he would give all of that to him. So if you know if he was trying to distract Jesus what do you think about us? He will even uh, try to distract us. He will send distractions in our lives that will cause us uh, to lose our focus on the reason why we even uh, come to church. And we know we go to church to worship God. But uh, Satan will try to uh, <clears throat> steal our, uh, uh, put distractions in our way by first of all, making us feel as if we don't belong there. Especially when we start uh, when we uh, uh, start praising God. First thing you're going to start putting into your mind, everybody looking at you. You know, look at how, how they looking at you. And, uh, you know, everybody think that, you know, you uh, uh, something is wrong with you the way you carrying on. And he'll try to make you feel as if you are useless. And that everything that you do, is, it has no effect at all. And that is just the tactic that he tries to use. It's a distraction. So how do we try to, how do we combat this attack that he uh, uh, brings upon us? Simply by keeping our eyes on Jesus at all times. Because David said, in the 121st number of Psalms, he said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And so our focus has to be what? Heavenward. Because we need to know where our help come from. No, uh, yes, we may be able to help one another, but ultimately uh, we cannot help anybody if if we didn't have the help ourselves. So ultimately, our help comes from the Lord. That's what uh, David told us in the psalmist. And then not only, and uh, yes, our help comes from the Lord, because we know that Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us that he, uh, he said, for I know the thought that I have toward you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. So in other words, we must focus on the good things that God has for us. So many times, see, the enemy wants us to what? To focus on all of, yes, we are going to have some not so good days. We are going to have trials. We are going to have tribulations. But Jesus told us to be of good cheer because he had already overcome the world. And so we can't look at uh, these situations that come in our lives. Because when we get to the bottom of it, a lot of those situations, are, 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 are Satan is the one that has brought them as a distraction. And so we, uh, uh, we've got to, not so all the time, you know, it's easy for us to focus on the bad things that happen, you know, and then we'll say, why is all of these bad things happening to me? But why not focus on the good? And if we take time to focus on the good, we'll see that the good always outweighs the bad. Uh, 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 but we must learn how to silence the lies of the enemy because that's what the uh, the devil want us to do. He want us to uh, uh, to look at the bad things and then uh, the wrong things start coming out of our mouths because he know that death is and life is in the what is in the power of our tongues. So he wants us to say the wrong things out of our mouths. 
And so what we've got to uh, uh, learn how, as I said, we got to learn how to silence him. And the only thing that can silence say, uh, Satan is the word of God. We got to understand that uh, uh, a lie is a weapon because Isaiah 54 and 17 says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises up against you in, in judgment, you'll be able to condemn it. And then he goes on to say that this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So what we need to do is to study and learn the word of God because Second Timothy 2 and 15 tells us to study, to do what? To show ourselves approved unto God. It says a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And when you look at the word study in the Greek, it means to be diligent and to labor for. So in other words, we've got to learn how to labor. We got to labor for Christ. Uh, uh, you know, everything does not come easy. And I know a lot of times, you know, we need to spend time in prayer. We need to spend time uh, in the word. We need to spend time studying. But how many of you know that uh, uh, some, when it's time for you to get up in the morning and pray, we always, you know, we fi we'll find something else to do or something will come up. We're too sleepy. I'm not going to get up right now. I'll just wait till a little later. Uh, and this is how uh, the enemy will defeat us. But we, we've got to learn how to defeat him. Uh, Satan, get thee behind me. You know, uh, 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 we got to have the word of God in our mouth to defeat Satan. Satan, uh, uh, you know, he can't uh, speak forth the word because the word is true. And we know that Satan is a liar. He is the father of lies. So we know that God's word is truth. So Satan can't tell the truth. So quite naturally, he's not going to be speaking the word of God. What he does is take the word, twist it, and turn it around so that it will benefit him. What is coming out of our mouths will benefit him and not give glory to God. So first of all, we said that he wants to what? To kill our purpose. Because he knows what our purpose, what we were placed here for. So not only does the enemy want to kill our purpose, but he wants to do what? He wants to steal our worship. Yes, he's a thief. I told you that when we first started out that he is a thief. And it says that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we found out that he wants to kill our purpose. Not only does he want to kill our purpose, but he wants to steal our worship. And according to the dictionary, uh, steal means to take without permission, to gain or to seize without right or acknowledgement. In other words, to take something that does not belong to you. And we know that praise, our praise does not belong to, 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 uh, to Satan. Our praise belong to God. See, the devil would like nothing more than to steal our worship, which would bring glory to him because he wants us to be so distracted, so depressed, and so selfish that we can't worship God. That is his goal. He wants us to be distracted. He wants to get us where we are, are depressed and, uh, and doing everything else. Whereas that we can't worship God uh, uh, because we know that that is what God, that is on our purpose. Uh, we are to worship God and we are to love him. Uh, uh, see, worshiping God is what we were created to do. Satan knows that. Everything we do and should do brings glory to God. And see, the enemy is so jealous that he does everything in his what? In his power to steal our worship. See, that's what he tried to do with Jesus. Uh, when, uh, when, uh, as uh, before, when I was telling you how he took him up in that mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And then he told him that 
All these things I give you if you would just uh, fall down and worship me. Yes, the devil wants to undermine us and uh, want us to give him our worship. Because the devil understands that worship equals acquisition. And he said that, just like he said that he would give Jesus all of that stuff if he would worship him. Because he knows that worship glorifies God. And here it, uh, the devil was trying to steal Jesus' worship. And that's what he wants to do with you and I today. He wants to what? Steal our worship. Because our worship does what? It glorifies God when it is done in spirit and in truth. He can't stand that. You know, see, it's easy to lift up our hands and say glory, hallelujah, when it's not really coming from uh, 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 with, uh, within. You know, when we are not doing it in, uh, in the spirit and we're not doing it in truth, we're just saying it to be saying it. So if we can just, uh, uh, if, if he can just cause us not to worship, then we're not glorifying God. And that's exactly what he wants. He does not, capital N-O-T, he does not want us to glorify God. So then how can we combat, combat uh, Satan? We have to maintain a life of worship. It's a mindset that we have to constantly keep up. And so when, uh, and, uh, when we constantly have our minds focused on God, it's very hard for the enemy to distract us. It's also important to live a life of repentance. Uh, since sin is what separates us from God. Uh, uh, you know, and, and that is another distraction. You know, sometimes we, you know, we'll do certain things where, I mean, I know it's not going to hurt. Uh, he didn't say that we could not do it, but anything that separates us from God is a sin. Anything that's going to pull us away and Satan knows that. So that's why he tries to put those type of distractions in our path or in our way. See, Isaiah 50 and 7 says, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. And then uh, Matthew 4, uh, uh, 4 and 10, the B section of it, of it tells us to worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So uh, we know who we are to serve. Satan knows, too, that we are, were put here to worship and to serve God because he knew that when he was in heaven, he was the worship leader. He was there worshiping. But when a sin was found in him, he got kicked out because what? He got to the place where he wanted to take God's glory and nothing has changed. He was just kicked to the earth, but he still desires to have God's glory. And so... To, uh, 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 that's what he wants to do. He wants to destroy. Uh, uh, he want, uh, uh, Then we go on to talk about to destroy. According to the dictionary, destroy means to uh, put an end to something, to kill it, to render it ineffective or useless, or to delete it completely. And that is what Satan, so that brings us up to our set, uh, third thing. We told you that Satan wants to do what? He wants to kill our purpose. He wants to steal our worship. And then he wants to what? He wants to destroy our relationship with God. My God, my God. He wants to destroy our relationship with God. And so, because that's what he did in the Garden of Eden, when he caused the relationship between God and and, and and humankind to be destroyed. We know how he told how he he got eased up to Adam and Eve and said, uh, uh, you know, you know, God told you not to eat of that tree, but it's not gonna hurt. You're not gonna surely die if you eat. He just know that uh, if you eat of that tree, that you're gonna have 
uh, 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 just as much knowledge and wisdom as he has. So therefore, that's why he doesn't want you to. And he just kept on talking in their ear. And he's, and nothing has changed. Satan has no nutrients. He's doing the same thing today. He's still whispering in our ears and telling us that, you know, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to worship God. Uh, uh, even though I know that uh, what your purpose is, uh, that you were placed here to worship and to bring glory to God. But let me have just a little bit of that worship. Just a little bit is not going to hurt me. And so, see, the uh, the enemy, he want to put a wedge between us and God. He want to put a wedge between us and the church, between us and our worship of God. And so he's trying all he can to destroy this relationship, the relationship that uh, we have with God. He's trying to uh, uh, destroy the relationship that we have uh, with one another. When we fellowship one with another, when we go to church, he's trying to do all of that. He's trying to what? He's trying to destroy it. See, it doesn't matter if it is uh, uh, through physical, emotional, financial, spiritual, or just simple little life stuff. See, any of these things, uh, Satan can use these things to create distractions. He can call and, and to cause pain and hurt and resentment. He will, all he needs is just a little crack to get in. And that's all he want to do once he get in. Then he can wreak havoc then once he get in. And sometimes he will take us unaware. That's why we always have to be on our P's and Q's when we stay in the word. Keep our eyes on the prize. Keep our eyes on the word of God. Uh, keep that worship before us. Uh, 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 but so, you know, so that Satan cannot uh, uh, try to come in because he will try to come in. Uh, John 15 and 5 tells us, Jesus said that I am the vine and ye are the branches. So that is a relationship. And as long as we don't get distracted uh, and we stay connected, Satan can't do anything. He can't come between us. But that's what he does. The least little thing that he can get us to be distracted about, then he can come in and cause uh, 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 all type of distractions. But see, God is saying to uh, uh, all of us, all you have to do is to trust me to give you what you need. He said, I will supply all your needs, not according to your circumstances, not according to your timeline, but according to my riches in glory. And see, that's what Satan knows that God is capable through Jesus Christ, to do these things for us. Uh, and the important thing is that we have a godly connection with God. And with God, when we, uh, 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 we got to have this godly connection with God when we worship him in spirit and in truth. That's the only way that we can have this godly connection. When we worship God, we got to worship him in the spirit. We've got to worship him in truth. See, uh, many people, we have a lot of people that are connected to the church, not the organism, but the organization. See, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. And so, uh, uh, but, you know, we are going in the building and we are just getting, I mean, I mean a lot of times we treat our church as is, uh, as pastors say, a social and saving club. You know, it's like, you know, we go and we just go there to say I've gone. But what did you do? Did you give God glory when you went? Did you give God glory? Or did you just go to be going? You know, so I can say that I went. And so, uh, but, uh, but the organization, the flow, the position, they are not connected with God, they are like uh, uh, Saul when he was worried about the position, about who did what or who was doing what and who was going to shine or, or be promoted. 
when we need to be more like David, who was more connected with worship, because he knew that this was how you enter the presence of God. We enter the presence of God through our praise and through our worship, especially when it's coming from within, when it's coming from our spirit man. Uh, 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 Jesus said, I am divine and you are the branches. So he's explaining our relationship that we have. And see, the devil understands that communication is foundational in building a strong relationship. That's why he tries to cut off our communication. See, communication is the most vital element in any type of relationship. Uh, even in a, uh, with friends, uh, uh, communication is vital. In a marriage, communication is vital. And yes, even, even in our communication with one another, as children of God, our communication is vital. And even our communication with God is very, it's the most vital element, as I said, in any relationship. And even, uh, and the loss of, 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 of the loss of having communication will cause the collapse of anything. And you know, a lot of marriages collapse because they what? They have lack of communication. They don't communicate with one another. Uh, and, and the same way it is, you know, in with friendship, a lot of people have, have uh, they, uh, their friendship have been dissolved because they had a lack of communication. And so we got to understand in the natural that no matter how good that person is, uh, if, uh, if the two of you uh, don't have a relationship, then you don't have anything going. See, man's uh, relationship with God fails in the Garden of Eden, as I stated before. And it has been on a downward spiral ever, ever since uh, because communication had been lost. When Adam ate of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he lost that communication that he once had with God. Uh, uh, and that caused the communication or uh, 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 relationship between uh, God and man to suffer and ultimately collapse. That is why Jesus had to come so that he could bring God and man back into uh, conversing or back in communicating with one another again. Now, listen at this. Worship is how we communicate with God. And when, uh, uh, when God communicates with us, he reveals to us in our spirit his thoughts, his plan, and his purpose that he has for us in order for us to bring it uh, to an expected end. And we will reach that expected end through worship and proper relationship with God. And Satan knows that. Satan does not have that relationship of communicating with God. We do. And that's why he is jealous. He does not want us to have communication with God. Uh, uh, but uh, in order for us to have this continual relationship uh, with God, it requires a lifestyle of purity. In other words, um, purity means being pure in our heart, pure in our head, pure in our eyes, pure in our mouth, pure in our hands. It's pure in our love and what we think and what we see, what we say, and what we touch or what we do. You know, we can't have no type of uh, 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 ultimate, uh, you know, we got an uh, ulterior motive uh, because of what we, you know, I'll do this, but I've got an ulterior motive for doing this. When I say I'm doing it for uh, for the sake of God, for uh, uh, for the sake of what Christ did for me on the cross, when all along I'm doing it because what? Because of something that I'm ultimately wanting from him. Not saying that, you know, God will bless us anyway. He's going to bless us when we do that which is right. But to try to sneak one in on him, uh, have an ulterior motive for doing what we do, for uh, 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 
for going where we go, uh, saying what we say, uh, uh, and you know, and, and even sometimes we we do things when we have an ulterior motive behind it. But we've got to let what we do be pure. It's we got to be pure in our love. We got to be pure in whatever we do. We got to be pure in whatever. Uh, even when we look upon something, we want it to be pure. You know, we uh, even, you know, a lot of people, are, uh, you know, looking at uh, things that they are not supposed to be looking upon. And, you know, and, and we can't be doing that uh, because what we want to keep our eye gate pure, our ear gate uh, so that, our, as pastors say, our process thinker, because that will we look upon. You know, quite naturally, when we look at something, then we are going to what? We are going to be thinking about that which we look we were looking at. Even when we hear something, we think about what we heard. So we've got to let that which we hear, and even that which comes out of our mouths, let what we say and what we do, let it be pure. Uh, uh, just like... Uh, the psalmist said, he said, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. You know, let me go back because uh, that was in Psalm uh, uh, 51 verses 10 through 17. He started out first by saying, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. He said, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. He said, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. See, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. You see, it is important for us to recognize the plan of the enemy. And we've got to take action against him. However, uh, we cannot allow him to distract us from worshiping God. We got to make sure that we stay focused on Jesus Christ and fall more in love with him day after day after day that our love for Christ need to grow more and more. And we only do that by what? Getting into the word, studying his word, because the scripture tells us to study, to show thyself approved. So we got to learn the word of God. We got to do what? Not only learn it uh, because, you know, it's easy for us to quote the word of God, but we got to do what? We got to hide it in our heart. For uh, uh, It's the sword of the spirit and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it will protect us from the enemy's distraction. In other words, never give up. And always allow the Holy Spirit to lead, to guide you, and direct you. And remember, God is a holy God who deserves nothing less than worship from his people. Remember, we were created to worship. I don't know about you, but my desire is to give God worship. Not just some worship, but true worship. I said, we got to worship him in spirit and in truth. So don't let the devil trip you up. All of these are distractions. They are designed to do what? To kill our purpose, to steal our worship, and to destroy our relationship with God. I pray that something has been said on the line tonight that uh, will benefit you throughout the rest of this week. Uh, <clears throat> I pray that you will have a blessed rest of the week. And I look forward to seeing each of you Galileans on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. 
But until we meet again, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. I pray that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to, unto you. And I pray that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace in the name of Yeshua. Go in peace.